Matt from the Man Cave. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. With your, did you see that jump with your daily devotion for April the 26th? Hey guys, today we're going to be in 2 Kings chapter 20. We're going to be looking at a great story. We were talking a few days ago about King Hezekiah, okay? And one of the things that we notice in verse 18 and verse 5, that here's the thing. He was living righteousness. He was a good king. He was doing what God was requiring of him. And listen to this text, okay? In 18 verse 5. I'm not going to, this isn't our text for the day, but it says, Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. And there was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, either before him or after him. He held fast to the Lord and did not cease to follow and kept his commandments, okay? And so here's the thing. This king, this King Hezekiah has been living in righteousness. He's been doing, okay, resting in God, but doing everything that God required of him. Again, perfectly? No. King Hezekiah wasn't perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. If you want to see someone perfect, here's the thing. You need to look upward, okay? Don't look in the mirror, whatever you do, okay? But today's text, again, okay, King Hezekiah gets sick and it starts like this verse 1 in those days Hezekiah became ill and he was at the point of death the prophet Isaiah son of Amos went to him and said this is what the Lord says oh guys can you just imagine this because whatever God says is a done deal okay and, and King Hezekiah is about to get some really bad news but the story ends up quite well it says this put your house in order because you are going to die you will not recover Golly, friends, listen, in life, aren't there things that happen to us, you and me in life, that just knock us back, knock the air out of us? We hear this terrible news over the phone or someone knocks on the door, something's happened, some tragic event in our life. And here's the thing, for a, for a short season, we're bewildered. We can't make sense of anything. We're hurt, okay? We're devastated, okay? A lot of times people get news from a doctor. They're blown away. You're kidding me. I have three months to live? Or you hear of a sudden death of a close friend, a loved one, a relative, okay? And so what are we to do? Friends, in the very next verse, it gives us the answer to that question. Hezekiah just hears from the prophet. Now watch this. Hezekiah knows who Isaiah is. Isaiah is a prophet of God. And whatever Isaiah speaks in the name of the Lord is a done deal. Hezekiah in his life as king, he's seen it over and over and over again. What the prophet speaks comes to pass, okay? The prophet just told him, you're going to die. Get your house in order. Say goodbye to everybody. If you have a will, get a will anoint someone else king okay do the things that you need to do before you're going to leave this life but what does he do what does king hezekiah does hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the lord watch this verse three remember O lord how i have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes and hezekiah whipped bitterly before the lord meaning this hezekiah hears these words you're going to die but now hezekiah do you see me swat the fly Hezekiah is now going to bring up the fact that, Lord, I've been living in righteousness. I've been doing what you told me to do. I've been following the commandments, your commandments. Hezekiah is putting his head against the wall. He's basically leaning his head against the wall, and he's crying out to God from the innermost part of who he is, and he's reciting his life. He's saying this, Lord, I've done this. I've lived in righteousness. I've followed your commandments. I did all the things that you said to do. I am not perfect, but I've tried my hardest. I've rested in you. I've gotten rid of this. The things that you said you hated, I hated. The things that you said that you loved, I love. Okay? And he's just pleading his heart and he's weeping bitterly before the Lord. In the Bible, if you read, okay, you're going to find out that God always responds to what? A broken heart to humility, to a contrite heart. He looks upon us, those people that are in arrogance and pride and haughtiness. Okay, oh my goodness, they are despised of Almighty God. That's why Satan got kicked out of heaven, okay? He got booted out of heaven because pride was found in him. Friends, there is no room for pride in our life. And this Hezekiah, this is a perfect picture of humility, coming to the throne room of grace and humility and pleading your case. Friends, I wonder if that was me. I wonder if it was you, if you were the king, okay? Whatever your name is say King who King Matt King Joe King Alice King whoever okay what would you say to God when you leaned your head have you been living that life of righteousness that you could recite Lord I've been living for the last 15 years or there was a point in your life where you drew a line in the sand and from that moment on you started living for God you started being a person of integrity you started making the right decisions you started running from sin and running from evil people and doing the things that you knew God wanted you to do hating the things that God hated loving the things that God loved what would you recite to God if you got that news and oftentimes we do get that news we go to the doctor and we hear something okay what do you say to God 
Are you living that life? Are you living a life that you could say, Lord, in all of my heart, I've lived before you in integrity. I've tried to be a man of God. I've done everything in my power to live the way you said to live, to follow your commandments, to follow your Your statutes, statutes. to live by your spirit, to abide in the vine, to rest in you, to be kind and generous towards those people that I don't care for, to forgive and forget, to love, to nurture, to build up, not to tear down. I mean, all the things, okay? What would your prayer be like? Would you have a prayer? Have you been living that life that you could pray like Hezekiah? See, we started with verse 18 of 2 Kings and verse 5. God said about the same thing about Job in the book of Job in chapter 1. He says this, this man was blameless, upright, he feared God, and he shunned evil. What would you say to God and what could God say about you? People are always asking me, Matt, it's so hard to do the right thing. It's so hard to make the right choices. It's so hard to live in righteousness. It's so hard to be holy and to live that life separated from sin, meaning this, walk the line, walking on the narrow path. It's very difficult. Is there any benefit to it? Are you kidding me? Look at Hezekiah. Is there any benefit to that? His life was required of him. What did he do? He recited his life before God. He didn't add to, he didn't take away, he just put it there plainly. Lord, have I not? Did I not? Bible says this, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. A lot of people hear that, but they don't understand that concept. They don't understand the weight of that statement, that verse in the Bible. The fervent prayer of a righteous man means is, it's it's Hezekiah. He's fervently praying. He's in righteousness. He's been living a life that's pleasing to God. He's a man of integrity, a king of integrity. Hezekiah was doing it right. But the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It means this in the original language. When you pray and you're in right standing with God, there is weight behind your prayer. Okay, there is substance behind it. God hearkens unto it. It's likened unto what? You're a prophet of mighty God. The words that you're speaking are of God. You've been living in the way you've been living out the will of God. You're just not someone that's been sinning, living a reckless life, coming up to God and demanding something of him. Oh no, your life has been pleasing to the Lord and he rewards those who live those lives. Friends, men in the man cave, God rewards those people who live a life. And no, you're never going to be perfect, but every day we're going Going to face decisions, make the right ones. Make the decisions that God would have you to make. Live in righteousness, right standing with God. You know right from wrong, okay? Pick up your cross daily. And that means this, I, sometimes I pick up the cross, but there are times that, watch this, I drop the cross. You're like, you do what? I drop the cross because I make the wrong decision. What do I need to do when I make a mistake, when I sin against God? Call it what it is, guys. Flies everywhere, okay? I need to repent of it, turn from that, agree with what God says about that sin, and I turn back towards God. And then what do I do? I get back up there and I pick up that cross and I start continuing in the way, in my life, in the pilgrimage with Almighty God. Well, what happens to Hezekiah? Before Isaiah had left the middle of the court, the word of the Lord came to him, go back. God's telling the prophet Isaiah to go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of your fathers, David says, I have heard your prayer. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I've heard your prayer. Can you imagine that? Isaiah's leaving. He's walking out outside the palace. He's about to leave the, the grounds, okay? God tells him, go back. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you on the third day from now, and you will go up to the temple of the Lord. Listen to this. He says, I'm going to heal you, and then what are you going to do? After I heal you. See, he was, he was sickness unto death. What is he going to do? I'm going to heal you, okay, and then you're going to go up the temple of the Lord, and you're going to praise me. So many people skip over that, meaning this. He had been going to the temple. He had been going to the temple and worshiping and sacrificing animals through those priests and doing the things that God required of him. What is that? God's commandments, God's word, okay, God's directions to you and I. We all know right from wrong. We all know the things that God requires of us. We know the things that God is asking us to do as individuals, don't we? Don't don't you? You and I know when God has placed something on our heart of hearts, we need to do this, and oftentimes we'll dig our heels and we're like, I'm not doing it. Friends, you will do it. <laughs> or you're going to suffer greatly and lose out on all that God has for you, okay? You don't want that. I don't want that. Friends, here's the thing. Verse 6 tells us this. God says, I'm going to add 15 years to your life. I'm going to give you an additional 15 years. And you're like, man, are you kidding? That's totally awesome. Here's the thing. Hezekiah is kind of old. Okay, so he's getting 15 additional years. God was taking him home. Okay, 
Friends, here's the thing. Every day is a gift from Almighty God. Just realize that. And I'm not going into that. Every day that you have, give praise and glory. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It may be difficult. It may be hard. There may be blessings. There may be favor. And there may be sorrow. No matter what day God presents to you, it's still this. It's a day that He has given to you. React, adjust, make the right decisions. Praise God throughout the day. The Bible says to pray without ceasing. What that really means is to praise without ceasing. Always giving God the glory for the day that you're living, okay? Well, here's the thing. Verse six, 15 years are added to his life. He's happy as the day is long. Really? But he's sick. He's really sick. Okay. He is told in verse seven. He, here's the thing. He has to get some herbs and some different things and he has to kind of chop them up and mix them and kind of make like a blend, like almost like an ointment. Okay. And he has to place that on, okay, Hezekiah. And then he needs to pray. Okay. Hezekiah is going to be good in three days. That's what Isaiah said. When God words, when God speaks to you, it's a done deal. Watch this very carefully. What did I just say? When God speaks to you, it's a done deal. What does Hezekiah do, okay? He questions it, friends. Up until this point, okay, Hezekiah has been flawless in his reaction to the news. He's been doing exactly what God would expect. He's been living in faith, living in trust. But in verse 8, Hezekiah had asked Isaiah, What will be a sign that the Lord will heal me? And a sign that I will be able to go up to the temple of the Lord three days from now. That's how sick he was, okay? Meaning this. I'm not going to believe you. God just spoke through you. You came back to me. You want a sign? Oh, guys, here's the thing. Hezekiah was human. Hezekiah was like you and I. We all falter sometimes. There are times that we're going so strong for the Lord. We're doing all the right things. And then here's the thing. We hit a bump in the road, okay? This is a bump in the road for Hezekiah. What's going to be a sign? Give me some proof of what you said is true. Here's the thing. Here's the proof. Three days from now, you're going to be going up into the temple. The proof was in the statement in the first place. It was absolutely spoken to him. Three days from now, okay? If you're not dead, you'll be in the temple praising God, okay? That's the sign. But he says, I want proof. Friends, here's the thing. God speaking it is all the proof that you and I need. And as you react to what he speaks into your life, you are bringing him such glory and honor. Those promises, those visions, those dreams, those goals that he's promised you in your life, take them. Friends, God doesn't lie. Bring them back to God. Say, God, you said, but say it in what? Humility, okay? And so he says, Lord, I need to know. I absolutely have to know. Give me some proof, okay? Did he need proof? He already had proof. Oh, the proof. Listen, here's the thing. God gives it to him in verse 9, okay? This is how down and out Hezekiah was, okay? Isaiah answered, this is what the Lord signed to you, that the Lord will do what he has promised. Shall the shadow go forward 10 steps or shall the shadow go back 10 steps? Okay, where, where am I? You can see my shadow right here. Hopefully the camera picks up my shadow. God's saying, I'll make the shadow go forward like time goes forward or I'll make the uh, shadow go backwards. Well, watch this very carefully. Hezekiah thinks, well, it's easy for time to go forward. Time's always going forward, so the shadow's always going this way or that way, okay? Make it go backwards, okay? So as Hezekiah is standing there, he's watching, okay? He probably did something like this. He probably put a, a line in the sand where the shadow was, where the shadow was lining up, and the shadow should be going this way, but all of a sudden, here's what God does. He makes the shadow goes backwards, okay? Do you know NASA has acknowledged that time went backwards? There's two times in the Bible where it talks about time stopping or time going backwards and both times are acknowledged meaning this NASA and all those scientists have come up and they're like this doesn't make any sense well it makes sense if you understand the Bible and you read the stories okay because they're missing all of these seconds when you had this story and the other story where Joshua was fighting okay and Moses okay you'll realize the exact amount of time that had been stopped or went backwards is equivalent to what they say is missing is that not amazing how God just continues to prove himself over and over and over again to a lost and dying world who are blinded in their sins, who have eyes to see but don't see and ears to hear but don't hear. And so it happens. Just as God said, spoke it through Isaiah, the sun went back 10 degrees. He realized this. Hezekiah gets better. Here is the warning. Friends, watch this. With the next 15 years of Hezekiah's life, he didn't serve God nowhere near as well as he had the first 15. He was reckless in a lot of his decisions. Are, 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 you, are you with me on this? He was making the wrong decisions. He wasn't living that life that was honorable. Hey friends, here's the lesson, okay? Oftentimes when God answers our request, our prayers, okay, and he blesses us mightily, we take that and we sin against God. That's, that's what Hezekiah did. He was given an additional 15 years, but in that 15 years, he forgot 
of what he was given. He forgot he was given 15 more years to live, to be with family, to be a king, to live that life, okay? And he just faltered. And friends, it's the same with you and me, and I've done it in my life. God has blessed me so mightily, so much in one area, only for me, days later, not even hours later, sometimes after he blessed me, to turn to sin. It doesn't necessarily, I'm not talking about your health has been given back to you. I'm just talking about a, a blessing, a financial blessing, a position of honor, a prestige, a new job, a new relationship. Something's happened in your life and you recognize this was the hand of God. God's mightiness, his strength, okay, his favor, his blessing has fallen upon me in pleasant places, okay. It has rained on the just and here's the thing, it's totally awesome. You're receiving, but oftentimes we will take those feelings. See, at that time we're on a mountaintop. We're feeling so good. We're just so full of ourselves. We couldn't lose with the losing machine. Everything in the world is going good. We're in love. I mean, we have plenty of money. Everything is just in our favor. But we take those feelings of security, uh, of peace, of joy, of just uh, excitement, and we just start transitioning to what this flesh wants. We start sinning against Almighty God. Friends, I've done this in my life. Oh my goodness, I can't even count the times. And I can, I, and I can look back now and see the pattern. It went from blessings to chastisement. Why? Because I, I took God's blessings and I started sinning against Friends, you can't do that. When God blesses you mightily, you can't do it. And recognize this, as you're feeling that way, elated, okay, just so happy in spirit, guard your heart, guard your actions, guard your mind, okay? I, I mean, it's, it's almost like rags to riches kind of deal. One second you're in rags, you're crying out to the Lord, you need a breakthrough, He gives you the breakthrough. Then the next decisions you're making are contrary to the Word of God, the ways of God, and what God has for you. And here's the thing, as you do that, God has to what? He has to chasten you, okay? And He, he realizes God's going to have to train you up so you can be trusted with more of the blessings which you're crying out to God for, okay? Sometimes I've seen Him give it, the person and sins, he takes it away. See that pattern in the Old Testament with the judges, okay? If you go to the book of Judges, here's the thing. The people would be in sin, okay? They would be in just blatant sin after God had blessed them. What happens? God brings correction. He brings judgment. They cry out to God. They repent. God brings someone in there, a judge or some person like Gideon, okay? It smooths things out, okay? Everything's back to normal. They're back to being blessed. They're back to enjoying life. But what do they do? They receive this mighty gift from Almighty God, okay? they slide back into sin. So what does God do? God brings judgment, correction, chastening, okay? He brings hardships into our life. What do we do? We cry out to God, 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 this is happening to me. This is happening to me. What does God do after he truly knows we repent? What? He waits. See, he needs to allow that chastisement. He needs to allow that pain. He needs to allow that suffering to take effect so it gets on the innermost part of who you are so you won't be stupid enough to sin against him in the same way. So he waits, okay? So each time they sinned against God, Israel, he waited. Sometimes it was a couple years. Sometimes it was 10 years. Sometimes it was 20 years under the oppression of an enemy, under affliction, under punishment, okay? Under less and lack and not enough of, okay? And some of you are living there that right now in that okay but we they kept on crying out Lord send us a redeemer send us something they send someone okay again God gets them out of the situation and for a season for a period of time they're living in what what God would require they're living in righteousness they're obeying the commandments of the God the laws of God all the things that God wants from his people from his children okay only to slip back into sin again. Friends, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, God says this, and this is a warning for you and for me. He says, when you go into the land, meaning the promised land, and you get houses, okay, that you didn't build, when you get vineyards, when you have money, when you have things, you and I have things in our house, tin, plastic, rubber, uh, you know, plasmas, TVs, leather, I mean, you know what I'm saying? We have things, okay? Don't forget me. Don't say, I did it in my own strength, because that's what people tend to do. They think, I, me, myself, and I, we did this. It was my job. I, I was the one working. You did nothing. Look at, look at, you did nothing. Stop breathing God's air and stop uh, allowing his, the, the heart that he gave you to pump blood. You've absolutely done nothing but respond to what you God has given arrogant, you. You arrogant, prideful, and say, I did it in and of myself. Oh, hush. You haven't done anything, okay? And so when you go into the land, when you experience the blessings, when you experience the favor of God, when you receive, okay, from God's hand, okay, what he's given, 
praise Him. And He says this, Don't you dare forget me. Give Him the glory that's due Him. Give Him the honor. Give Him the praise, okay? Act correctly. Act in righteousness. Obey God in the blessings. Very few people can do that. Many people, I'd say about 95%, can handle the test of poverty. They can ink by. They can get through that, okay? They can adapt, adapt, adjust, overcome through poverty, through lack. Do you know it's only about 5% that can get through the test of prosperity because they take their eyes off of God. They say, I got it from here, God. I got all the money I want. I got the house of my dreams. I got the car. I got the wife. I got the dog named Rover. From here, because I got the soft coated wheat interior just back from the groomer. And everybody, he's the showcase dog. I walk him around the neighborhood with my latte. And everybody's looking at me. Oh, well, you're doing so well. Yes, I am. <laughs> How did you do it? Oh, well, you want me to tell you? If any other word comes out of your mouth, then God did it. You faltered, you failed, you've sinned against God, you little arrogant piece of garbage. Okay, God does all these things for us, not us, okay? Hezekiah is a great king, but I like Hezekiah because he was real, okay? He, he thinks he's going to die, he puts his head against the wall, he cries out to God, God heals him, okay? He's faced with some new decisions, he does poorly, you and I have done poorly, you and I have done well. What are we going to do from this moment forward? That is the question. Not what we've done in the past. Yeah, we've all made good decisions, we've all made bad decisions. What are we going to do from this moment going forward. That is the question for you and that is the question for I. And I say we make the right decisions and live in Christ. Hey, this is Matt from the Man Cave.